We're live? Okay. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are here at the Enrichment Center. And this is called the Rock Mine. I always Rock call it mining, the Mining Association Enrichment Center. Mining Association Enrichment Center. I'm telling everybody the wrong one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, and and this is where I'll be doing my recordings from now on. And as you see, this is a different background, you know. And um, but I'm loving it. And uh, so we're going to do some um, some different things today. But I like to start off with um, working with my tools, explaining my tools, because they're very simple. What I do is I make jewelry and wall hangings and all kinds of household items that I can imagine. Because whatever you imagine, you can create. So I use what I can imagine and I create things out of recycled paper. Some people could say upcycled paper, okay? Because when we choose to use it, it is also, um, it could be somebody's junk because it is like magazines that have that are old, that have been used, that have been read, and after a while you want to get rid of them because you keep getting more magazines, okay? Those are the magazines that I can use for my art, okay? Um, also, I use uh, all kinds of um, what I call junk mail. They, everybody likes to send you so much, always asking you for this credit card, that credit card, you want this or that. All of those papers used to, used to aggravate me because I'm saying, I go to my mail, I look at my mail, and it's like five or six envelopes of stuff that I have no interest in whatsoever. <laughs> so now what I call my, uh, what I call Montezuma's revenge is I use that junk mail in my art. It helps me build a foundation for my art. So another thing I use is the lightweight cardboard that, um, you know, cereal and let's see what else I have. I buy beans <laughs> and they come in like a box of cans and here they, the cardboard, I use that. And I use this to make earrings out of necklaces, um, anything I can imagine, that's what I use that for. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, this is, this is my art form. That is my mission is to share it with anybody who would like to, one, learn how they can take, they can develop a craft, they can develop a art form, they can develop a hobby and not have to spend a lot of money and yet they can express themselves and also share with other people because you can make things to sell if that's your choice or you can make things to give away as little gifts. You know, sometimes somebody might ask you over for dinner. Um, and it, it's nice when you come to visit somebody to come with a little gift. And it's really nice when it's something that you made yourself. You know, so you might think about it. This might be a craft that you could do, um, help stimulate your brain, 
okay? I'm in the enrichment center, so I'm sort of geared towards seniors who maybe have a lot of time on their hands and want to do something other than looking at TV. Now, looking at TV can be very informative, it can be entertaining, but sometimes you just need to do something that's going to stimulate your brain, you know, keep you learning. And that's very, very important. Okay, so that's what motivates me. That's what I look to motivate other people to get involved, do something for whatever your reason is for doing it, okay? My reason has uh, changed. I originally started doing it um, because I had a lot of time. I am an artist. I am a mm, entrepreneur. I've at any given several times had my own business. It was usually centered around things that I created, like uh, clothing, jewelry. Um, jewelry has always been one of my major things that I love to do because it's one thing, you can have a whole jewelry shop in a bag. All your equipment, everything you need, you can have it in a bag. It doesn't take a lot of space. You can whip it out. You can start doing, making wherever you are. That's one of the reasons why I love jewelry making. Okay? So, at any given time, I have had all of these different things and I have made them for sale. And I've enjoyed it. I enjoy being out one-on-one. Um, -on -one, uh, speaking with people who admire my craft and and they want to purchase it and you know that I ah, love it love it love talking to people you know love it okay so but at at the time when I actually started doing the paper I was just looking at um, some African paper beads. Um, you might have seen them somewhere, and they were like barrels. They looked like barrels. They looked like they were round, but they were long. And um, they were, they were, you know, people were. I was seeing them in jewelry. I was seeing people making necklaces out of them, and I was saying, "Wow!" And then I saw them actually being sold online loose like like you would buy any other kind of bead and i was saying wow there's a market for that that's interesting so now i'm just got my curiosity going maybe i should start dealing with some paper you know and at the time i was upstate new york living with my daughter and i didn't have a lot of space so i said this is something that i could do and i could explore it and see you know, whether I could do something with it. So I started out with those kind of beads, but then I said, well, let me try this and let me try that, because wherever I start, I always progress. I always get an idea, and if I do this, and then I could take this and put it with that, or I could change it like this. So that's how I do whatever I do, whatever, if it's sewing, I'm trying to come up with something different. If it's, you know, it was started off with just little African beads, that wasn't, you know, that wasn't enough. I started doing, then I came up with these, I started seeing these uh, round beads. And I realized that there's such a variation in the bead that you could do almost, oh, just all kinds of things. but without changing your actual raw material. So, the raw material is what I call a paper rod, okay? So now we're gonna get down to what I always try to do, and that is to show my audience, which by the way, thank you, for looking at me. Thank you for expanding my 
audience. You know, I love it. Um, okay. So I always start off, just in case you've never seen me do it, making a rod. And you can use anything that is round and long like this. I prefer something long, okay? Uh, especially if you're going to use a whole sheet of paper, you need something long, okay? So, um, but it doesn't, this is a dowel and it's wooden and you can buy them at Walmart and they come in a package and they come like three sizes in a package. I think this would be the smallest and then they have a medium and a larger one. And they give you, I don't know, maybe three or four of each and for a dollar something. So this is very reasonable. That's one of the good things about what I do. It doesn't cost you a lot of money, you know? It doesn't cost you a lot of money. Okay, like some crafts, the materials you use can cost you a fortune. What you uh, use more is your imagination with this craft than it is you spend on the material. Okay, so here I go. I am using, this is a dowel. This is a knitting needle, a really thin knitting needle. And why? Because the, whole, the size of what you're wrapping it on governs the hole in the middle of the bead, okay? You can see the hole in the middle of that bead. Let's see. Okay, let me see if I have what, what it decides. Okay, you see? This is the size. And this is another knitting needle. This is actually a size 11 knitting needle. This is made out of plastic. I pick them, pick them up very inexpensively in the thrift stores. You don't go buy them brand new. You go in the thrift stores, sometimes they're selling you a pair of them for 20 cents, 25 cents, 50 cents, you know, depends. Um, so, you see? When I wrap this on this size, the hole is this size. Now, if I had wrapped this on this size, you see, it would have been a small hole in the middle. That hole is part of your design for whatever you're making, okay? All righty, now, so, I got it. Three, four, here's a bigger one. Now, if you're going to be make a big hole, here's one. This is a big hole for this bead. Actually, this is one, two, three size beads. The outside is made by wrapping the rod on something like this, which is oval shaped, okay? You can use anything. This is, this is my technique here, <laughs> okay? But my thing is to reuse, recycle, upcycle, okay? So I use things that people throw away. Okay, I've used this to make this oval shape, okay? Now, this oval shape, has a round bead in the middle, a smaller bead at the bottom, and a smaller bead at the top. So there's like three different sizes that makes this shape. And this you'll see again later, and you see what that is. Okay, so here's another example of a small hole. Okay, actually, this was, um, this 
knitting needle is really smaller than this hole. But you see what I'm saying? There's a little small hole in here. And this is a little bowl. I call these ring bowls. Ring bowls, okay? Um, when you take off your ring at night and you want to keep it in something and not have it rolling around, you put it in there. Or you can put your earrings in there. Boom. And it's, you know, it's just a little accessory, okay? Now, you can make a bowl as big as you want it. I just made it this size because I stopped there. Actually, the size of the bowl is the size of the bottom. So you make the bottom this big, then the bowl will start to go up like that. But you're using the same rod and the same process, no matter how big or how small your bowl is. Okay, so I am going to show you how I make a rod. Okay, I'm gonna take a piece of paper, okay? Now, whenever I make a rod, I'm also thinking about mm -hmm, what size I want it to be, okay, um, and what I'm going to make with it, because a larger rod will make a different size of the bees, okay? So, that's something. Sometimes you want a bee to be this wide. Well, you would use a narrow, a narrow one of these. Probably this size or maybe even this size. This size would probably make a very slim rod. Okay, a slim rod would make, okay. I make some very tiny beads. Take, make these beads to go in tiny areas. <laughs> okay. Here's a bag of little tiny beads. Uh -uh. There you go. Look at those. See how tiny they are? This is another one of my upcycling. These are made out of receipts. I get a dozen receipts. Whenever I leave my house, I buy anything. Uh, a cup of coffee, they give me a receipt this long. I break it up. A receipt this long, I make four of these beads out of it. Okay, I get home, I got a pocketbook full of receipts. Okay, what do I do with them? So I, I used to just throw them away, but I would throw them away with an attitude. This way I don't have an attitude because I smile and I say, uh -huh, I know what I'm going to do with those. I'm going to make me some little tiny white beads. And they always come in handy. Now when I make something this tiny and with a little hole, you have to use a little, you see? You see how that is? You have to start it on a very thin rod, whatever that is, okay? That's the key. That's the key right there, okay? So now, I'm gonna do a rod, okay? Do a rod, okay? I'm gonna use this one, the wooden one, and you gotta know whatever is gonna show on the outside, of your rod should be on the bottom. On the top, this is all gonna get wrapped up in the rod, okay? 
So you start off, I start up because I'm right-handed, in the left hand, upper corner, okay? Left hand, upper corner, lower corner, upper corner. Okay. And I just fold it over and hold it and start it rolling around the rod. Okay, just roll it around. And as you roll it, you can start to pull this out a little. And you can roll it. And you take, this is what is known as school glue or white glue. Doesn't matter the manufacturer, okay? I buy it by the gallon, which is very reasonable. There again, I'm not spending a lot of money on this crab, but there you go. There is the rod. Now you notice this has this white, and it has a lot of brown and white there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. So you might want to use that part more in your design. Okay, if you're going to make a bead out of this, the process would be to flatten it. Now, if you make a lot of these and you uh, leave them round and then at a later time you decide you want to make uh, some of these beads, know that it is more of an effort to flatten them. In order to make these, you have to flatten the rod. It's easiest to do it right after you've made it because it's, it hasn't dried, it hasn't, you know, firmed up. So now, if you're going to make a lot of beads, either you make them, you roll it and then make the bead, or you mold it and flatten it. That way, uh, it's better for you when you start to roll it, it doesn't fight you as much, you know, because if you're flattening it and it's, it's firm, it's hard, you know, to roll it flat so that it, it's tight and doesn't have spaces in between, um, it's harder, it's harder to do. It's not impossible, it's just harder. Okay, so now we're going to make a bead, one of these. Another way to help smooth it out, you can just sort of run it like that, and that'll help it to smooth it out. Okay, so there again, if what you want to be on the outside should be away from you. So you're going to start, like I want the inside of it, the inside of the bead to be white, and the outside to be the dark color. Okay, so I'm gonna start there, fold it over, and just as it wraps around enough for you to hold it together, that's enough right there. Now you use your glue, and you just sort of put a light line. And if it's a long piece like this, I like to just roll it. Don't go all the way to the end because then you can start to make a mess. Roll it up until you have rolled up all of the glue that you put down. Then you flatten it out. Make sure it's flat out. Then you can continue the bead. You don't squeeze it, you sort of let it just drizzle out. So you get like a nice little line. And then you roll it in it. Okay. So that's it. And then you just pull it off. And then you can mash it to make sure that 
it lined up, and since it hasn't hardened up, it hasn't dried, whatever adjustment it needs to do to be even, it will just slide into place, and there it is. You see, the dark is on the outside, the white part is on the inside, and that's the size, and the hole is that size, okay? So there you are. There you are. That is the process right there, okay? Now, what we're going to make out of beads today is one of my latest, one of my latest, absolute latest, actually made these yesterday. Uh, refrigerator magnets. Okay? These are separate. They have the magnets on them. This is separate. I just sort of like, I just like things in threes. I don't know. It's okay. And, um, okay, so this is what I showed you before. Okay, so I have two of those. I'm going to put them on something so you can see them. Let's see. I'm going to prop it up. So here's, here's another one. And you see they have the magnet on the back. So you just pop them on your refrigerator and you, you put your menu on, you put your shopping list on, boom. These are different sizes. These are nice. These are nice little gifts. These are, that's another size. See, there's those three sort of medium or small pieces, not really tiny, but small. So what I did was I took these and hot glued them together and made one, one magnet out of it, okay? Now, remember those little teeny tiny beads? Look at that. There's actually two, four, six, seven beads, the white ones, and then one blue one in the middle. So I hot glued them together and then put the magnet on the back. So that is what we're going to do today. We're going to make refrigerator magnets. These things are so cute. I absolutely love them. This is not going to be the end. I already got a new idea on refrigerator magnets. That'll be another time. I'm not going to show it to you now. I'm not going to tell you about it. You got to keep looking. Okay, we're going to make some different ones. But these are my first refrigerator magnets, and I absolutely love them. Absolutely love them. And so, I'm going to make some with you. I'm going to show you how I made them. Okay? All right. Now, these, those are the ovals. Well, I'm not going to do oval. What I'm going to do is round. Okay? So, I'm going to uh, show you how I would create these. Okay? I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but we're working on a better system about creating and being able to demonstrate better what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Okay? So, this is the outer shape, okay? Now, what we can do is, hmm, let me think, let me think. It's a creative process, let me think here. Okay, I have different shapes and sizes. Okay, oh, these are pretty, okay? These are pretty. I could actually, let's see, put those in, no, those are not going to do. Okay, not them. Okay, I know what. We'll use these. And 
we could take one and put it. Ah, ah, oh ho. See, now this little one here, I put some foil in the middle. So that meant I wrapped the foil on the rod first. So it has a little shiny thing in the middle there. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in the middle. Or, and so I'm putting, I'm filling in the circle. I'm putting in beads in the circle to see what will fit in. And that, that's, that's the process there, you see? Try to figure out a system where, okay, here's another one. You want it to fit tight. It'd be better off if it fit tight because when you put the glue on, I will put a little glue, a little dab of glue, and then put it in. So I want it to fit tight and I want it to fit snug. So sometimes, ah, this looks good. Okay, so if you can put it in, you can put them in and they stay in without any glue, then they'll definitely work. See? There you go. So I actually use different sizes and different colors. Even the outside is different. And uh, this is going to be a refrigerator magnet. Okay? You see? If it stays in, if you're making a shape, and you want to fill it in, use, make a lot of different sizes and then fill them in. If they stay in like that without any glue, then you got to fit. That's a refrigerator magnet. Okay, so now we got another one. Okay, that's the same size, but we're going to do something different. We're going to fill it in. I think I need a little, a white one would be nice. Okay, so maybe another little teeny white one. Okay, that's it, that's it. See what I mean? There you go. There's a bigger bead here, and it's a dark color, and then there's a lighter blue, and then some white, and there you go. There you go. So just like that, I made two refrigerator magnets. Now all I have to do is plug in my hot glue. Okay. And Since I am, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, here's a nice size one. I'm going to make a refrigerated magnet out of that. Okay, and I want you to see, you buy these, and, you know, in the store, I think actually, I'm not sure where I got these. Either at anywhere, um, Walmart, I think, probably has these. And they're little magnets. And they, they actually come on a little metal disc. I'm going to figure out something to do with those little metal discs, really, because they're, they're really cute, too. Okay? And you get 12 in a package, so, and then, I, don't, I forgot how much they cost, but it, you get 12 in a package. Now, another thing that I thought of, it says this is kind of a lightweight, a light color, you know, not a lot of baboon to it, 
one thing you could do, as which I thought of, is to add a bead. You know? Wow. I always have some some beads around. And um, my one of my fave colors is blue. I don't know. I could add blue, but it's kind of dark. So we want something that has a little bit more pop to it. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Might have to do that one though. Let's see. I'm trying to see if I can find something that will, you know, give a little bit more sparkle to it. Okay, here's a, like a purple. Oh. Okay. So we could try the purple and see what happens to it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, first I'm going to add the, um, the magnet onto the back. And sometimes um, when you're making a bead like this, one side it comes out really smooth and flat. That should be the front. This side has a little wavering and that could be the back. Okay. So we're going to put the magnet onto the back. So I'm thinking, is this hot enough? Yes, it is. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to put this on the back. And then... I think I'm going to put that on. Oh, my little. Maybe I'll put two, two beads, because I really want the beads to, um, to show. And this is something. that I just thought of, so we'll see how it works. I don't know. Hmm. Yep. It seemed like if it, it'll work if you put it down in the hole. Okay. So it's in there, <laughs> but it's blue, but it almost looks black because it's up against the, uh, what's the name? It's up against the uh, magnet, which is dark. So it'll show a little, a little something. Like, it almost looks like a black bead in the middle. You see that? So that's, that's nice, though. It, it just gives a little pop to, to, the, uh, to the bead. Okay, so that's the... Now, so now we're going to do these. So I'll pop it out. And I'll put a little glue. So basically what I want to do is glue this first one onto the side. And when you're doing the hot glue, you sort of got to hold it for a minute. Not a minute, but a few minutes, a few seconds. Just let it set up. Okay. And then you want to put another one. So now you see where that's going to fit. That's going to fit. It's going to touch the big one over here, and then it's going to touch the wall 
of the other bead over here. So you need two, two little dots of glue and you're done. And once you get it in, you sort of like ease it in. And then you, you press it. And make sure you're not pressing it out the back so you because you're going to have to put your magnet on the back, so you want to like a smooth surface on the back. Make sure it stays. So then you see it has two pieces in. Okay. So there again. Let's see. What did I do? I'm going to put a dab here and a dab over here, like in two spots because because it's going to touch another bead. Now what I'm finding out here is that we might have to add a larger bead here because it's, it seems like I'm going to end up with too much space. Okay, so we just that's why sometimes I just sit and make beads all different sizes and colors and okay so that's what that'll be better okay so uh, put two dots and put it in okay now I think I have just enough space for one little tiny bead to fit in. So I'll put a dot here. And a dot there. Now this is something that You'll be able to, ooh, you'll be able to see. You to That's a, I didn't even know you were so here. <laughs> it is something. <laughs> this is something that I'm doing here. So now this is finished. You see? So I actually, when I actually put it in, I was able to get um, four of them in, but when I actually made it, it really came out to be five. So this is nice. This came out nice. And what I'll do is put a magnet. And it's, but all of these have to be they have to be um, covered with, they have to be covered with um, either Mod Podge, which Mod Podge um, does add a little sheen to it, or if you don't care about that, you just want protection for your colors and for your material. You can use the acrylic uh, clear, which is a, a paint, a water uh, soluble acrylic paint that is clear and um, it protects the surface. So this one is done. Here you go. Here you go. I'm done. So. I made two.
I made this one with just the beads, and this one with two, four, five, six beads actually. The outside is a is a big bead, and then five inside. Okay. So there you go. That's my wall. Um, wall. That is today's video. I'm not making two hour videos anymore. One hour video. That's enough for me to explain. That's enough for me to show you. And I hope you learn. I hope you enjoy it and share it with other people. And make some little things. Just try it. Just try it. it it's something that you could do. You know, while you're looking at TV, you can still look at TV, you know. And a lot of times I'm looking at TV, I'm looking at YouTube. And by the way, that's another thing. I am um, on YouTube. <laughs> and yes, yes, I'm on YouTube and I'm, I am set up. Doing my own channel is um, Liz Torrance, no, Arts and Crafts, Arts and Crafts by Liz Torrance. Okay? So, I just sat here and made another one. Okay? Here you go. And I like it that I can put a little bead. I'm going to get some, and I sure I ha I'm sure I have some at home, some gold beads and some silver beads or something, or the, the beads that have a little sparkle to them. I know I have them at home. So that would be nice to put in the middle of some of these, you know, and add a little bling bling to your refrigerator, okay? So there you go. Um, that's what we're doing here. We're coming up with new ideas and redoing the old ideas and hoping to inspire somebody. <laughs> That's my mission, to inspire somebody to keep going, keep going, keep going. As long as God is on your side, hmm, keep going, keep going. That's me, Liz Torrance. And I am at the Enrichment Center in Brooksville. Um, come by, you know, come by and uh, see what we do in here, you know, see what you can learn, see what you can contribute, you know, check it out. Okay, in the meantime, thank you, and I'll see you next week, okay? At least once a week now, I'm going to be putting up a video. Once a week. I promise. Okay? I love you all. Thank you. And I am going to say bye-bye.